I'm hoping the young people are going to grow up and be strong and not allow these kind of tragedies to happen again. Fritzi was one of the millions of Jews persecuted during World War II. And despite passing in 2021, she continues to share her story with students every day in the Illinois Holocaust Museum's virtual reality exhibit. Opportunities to speak with living Holocaust survivors is dwindling as the population ages. It's estimated that less than 50,000 living survivors remain in the U.S. The Illinois Holocaust Museum is working diligently with remaining survivors like George Brent and Gary Berkovich to preserve their stories through different educational avenues. These two survivors were as eager to learn about each other's journeys just as they were to share their own. On May the 20th, 1944, we were the last vestige of Hungarian or Jews that were deported and taken to concentration camps. The train stopped for a moment, and my father looked through the uh, barbed wire window, and it says Auschwitz. When I got off the train, I couldn't say goodbye to my mother and my brother. I saw them getting off the train, and that's the last I saw of them. Later on, I knew that all women who had small children and wouldn't give up the child, even though they were able to work, were immediately taken and cast. George and his father were forced to work at Auschwitz. He was then transported to various camps and managed to avoid selections. But despite that, George witnessed many atrocities, like abuse and starvation. There was the famous or infamous camp called Mauthausen, an awful place. But they killed people by overwork and by having to climb up the stairs, some 96 stairs, every day after day after day, carrying these huge 50-pound boulders on their backs. Most of the people who've been there in Auschwitz or Birkenau for a while looked emaciated. You could count their bones without them taking their clothes off. My experience was very different from the George. He was not that lucky as I was because I was uh, born much later and I was in different country. Gary was born in Kharkiv, Ukraine in 1935, hundreds of miles away from George. When the war reached Gary, he and his family were forced to flee. During that time, uh, I experienced very horrible stuff. Our train was bombed. He details his experience in Never Heard, Never Forget. The book puts a spotlight on Holocaust survivors from the former Soviet Union. We were put in a teeny dugout, a hole in the ground slightly larger than the kitchen of our Kharkov apartment and slightly deeper than the grandfather height. And when his family moved to Turkestan, Gary says poverty was widespread amongst Jewish refugees, so much so that they starved to death. So every morning I saw a, a picture like that. It was a two-wheel car. They were collecting the dead bodies, put them in a cart, and went nearby, to nearby ravine, and they put them there in a massive grave. Sometimes when I do remember, I, I, I may cry. Like Gary, George's story will also live forever through the museum's virtual reality exhibit. It's so amazing that I am sitting there in awe to see myself on the screen in all the places that I've been to. I am not forever, but the film may be here forever, or for at least for a very, very long time.